Hey everyone, welcome to my final play. I'm Brian. I'm here with former Major League Baseball pitcher Pat Daniker. Pat, thanks for joining me. Sure, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yep. Uh, so we're going to get into the sport of baseball um, and the impact that it had on you, uh, but more importantly, kind of what it looked like as far as what it taught you throughout the years. Um, and we'll start with where it all started. So. Uh, well, it's uh, I guess it's funny. It started um, right here, right down the road. Yeah. Um, T-ball on the minor league field here. I think, if I'm not mistaken, my dad created T-ball here at Loyal Sock. Um, so started right right here at Black Canyon or Bruce Henry, whatever they call it now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much where it started. Right, right, right here, right down the road. So as far as the game, obviously introduced to it at a young age. Um, what did that process look like as you continued to play? Um, and everybody has that dream of playing at the big leagues uh, from the time that they're young. Uh, but when did it really start to click of having the ability and, and the work that you put in to get to that next level? Well, I mean, I knew when I was a kid that, it, you know, I was pretty good at baseball. Mm -hmm. um, and then I obviously it carried over. Uh, I think it's probably, it's hard to tell when you're that little, you don't know how everything's gonna pan out. But once I got to high school, I, you know, I realized that I was, you know, pro I probably could take it to the next level if, if that's what I wanted to do, which that's always what I wanted to do as, as long as I can remember that's what I wanted to do, play baseball, be a professional baseball player. So yeah. I heard that I already had that part figured out. Um, now it was just kind of, I guess, taken over and hopefully, you know, let that happen. But yeah, I think probably in high school, my dad, um, he was very good at instruction and, and whatnot, but not really so much the pitching mechanics, which I ended up doing obviously pitching. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think even mm -hmm. I remember it was my sophomore year or maybe my junior year, and I think he told me one day in the car on the way home. He said, "You know, I can't at this point. You know, I can't really instruct you anymore. You know more than what you're doing what you're doing right now that I can teach you." Mm -hmm. So I mean, I think definitely I knew by that point, and then uh, you know started getting recruited to college, and you know it's a lot different than it was, uh, or a lot, a lot different then than it was than it is now on mm -hmm. um, the recruitment process and whatnot with all the perfect game and all that other crazy stuff but then you know i started to get letters started to get recruited mm -hmm. um and obviously you realize at that point that you know something that probably you can you can you know do at the next level right um so as far as that recruitment process you ended up playing at the university of virginia um but you know where were some of the other offers then and, and what made you land on the decision of virginia well, uh, just kind of random story. I, I was playing, um, I was playing uh, for post one uh, Legion ball. We had a really, really good team. I think we had six or seven guys all played D one on that team, so we were, we were pretty loaded. And uh, we traveled around. We played against some of these really competitive travel teams. I think we were playing against a team called the Oriole Landers. And uh, I pitched that day against a kid that Virginia was there to see. Okay. And I think I threw a no hitter that day. I don't know how many guys I struck out, but I, I had a you know fantastic game that day, and they recruited me that day. Oh. So that I just kind of ended up on their radar, and I randomly you know ended up there, um, and that recruited there anyway, and then that's where I ended up. But yeah, I got recruited to Penn State. Of course, um, they were the first ones to call and offer me you know a full scholarship. I, just didn't really want to go to Penn State. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of get a, get out of here, get a little further away, see something else. Um, I got recruited to Ohio University. They offered me another full scholarship as well. Um, I was just another random game. They came to watch me play. I think I went four for four, and I think I randomly enough threw a no hitter that day as well. Um, and they they came home and they came back to my house and told me that I could um, I could hit as well. Yeah. Um, that really didn't. I didn't really want to hit at that point. And so, but that was it was nice. Um, I got recruited to NC State. Um, they, Jason Phillips. He was he was actually on the uh, when they were when they were showing me the um, the list of basically the rotation for that following year when I would have been going in. Jason Phillips was on it. Jim Pitsley, I think he was a like a first round pick. Neither one of them ended, ended up going to school, but. Mm -hmm. NC State wasn't really somewhere I wanted to go because I didn't think I was going to be able to pitch my freshman year. I wanted to go somewhere where I was going to be able to, you know, get on the mound right away. I didn't want to wait around. Um, and, that, and then it just ended up, you know, that's where it was. A couple other schools too, but nothing um, solid. Those were, the, those were the main scholarship offers that were really um, 
on me from day one. And then mm -hmm. some of the other stuff was just kind of, you know, just some here and there. I'd talk to some teams and whatnot. Miami, I, I talked to them a bunch, but nothing real serious. And then I went down to Virginia, visited there, and just realized, just kind of fell in love with it. And that's where I wanted to go. Cool. Um, and then as far as once you were there, uh, you actually left early um, to go to uh, the, the Major League Baseball program. Um, but what did that look like as far as, um, as, as, far as your career there? Um, and how did that progress to kind of get you to the next level then? Yeah, I, uh, so I got there at a really good, really good year. Uh, my freshman year, I, I was a freshman All-American. Um, you know, when I, when, I, when I went to school, I was from a small town, playing mm -hmm. against small schools. I mean, pitching against Sugar Valley and Rillo Bucktail, and a lot different than, you know, going in my freshman year and pitching against Florida State and Clemson and, um, you know, NC State and, right. you know, uh, Florida State. Um, so... When I got there, um, you know, we had the kind of the State of the Union type of thing. My coach, uh, I was going to be the four starter. Um, we, we struggled, you know, we struggled pretty bad my freshman year. And then by the time the ACC tournament rolled, or the ACC uh, regular season rolled around, I was pitching Friday night against Clemson. Um, pretty nervous, to say the least. They were like number one or two in the country and a mm -hmm. bunch of first-round draft picks. Did not win that day. Um, but so... Once my freshman year rolled around, I realized, you know, this could be pretty, this could go pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a great freshman year. I think I led the ACC in complete games. And, um, yeah, I couldn't ask for anything more. So and then I uh, came back from my sophomore year, had a, another pretty good year. We had, we had a pretty good staff. Um, we had a guy who ended up being, uh, I think, the eighth pick overall. Another guy I went in the second round. Um, and then myself, and then of course my junior year rolled around, did not have the year that I was looking for my junior year. I was projected to be a lot higher, but it was just one thing or another. I got a new pitching coach and my mechanics were all jacked up. <laughs> and um, yeah, it, it, it um, didn't really turn out how I wanted it to turn out, but um, so I got dropped in the fifth round. Um, and then, uh, you know, after a couple weeks, signed and headed off to Bristol, mm -hmm. um, rookie ball with the White Sox, and that's how I ended up in professional baseball. Unreal. So um, how many years then did you spend in the professional organization? Uh, well, I was there. I, I played professional baseball for 10 years mm -hmm. total, um, but with the White Sox, I think five or six. Um, and then I was, uh, I was claimed off waivers mm -hmm. um, and ended up by the Blue Jays. Um, Went to the Blue Jays, pitched there the rest of the season uh, in AAA in Syracuse. Um, got taken off the 40 man um, by the Blue Jays and then released ultimately, ultimately by the Blue Jays, I think the following year. And then I signed with uh, the Cubs and went and played AAA out there. Um, got released there and then I went and played at a couple different ind independent ball teams. I played in uh, Camden. I played in Newark for a couple years. I made a couple pit stops in some other places that just, yeah, crazy, just all over the place. Yeah. One, I went to one place just to, for the playoffs, hurt my elbow, had to come home. I mean, it was, yeah, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of crazy rides. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then as far as the independent ball, once you were done, um, you know, explain to us as much as you can in detail of, of your final play then. Uh, well, I guess I, I don't remember the exact final play or the hitter. Um, we were in Atlantic City. Um, I had told my wife at the time uh, and uh, a couple family members that this was going to be my final game. Said 10 years, this is it. I had decided, I think, a couple weeks before that, that it was, you know, time to just kind of wrap it up. Um, I had finished college at the time. I uh, went back to school, um, so I knew that was already done. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, we were in Atlantic City, and I didn't pitch real well that day. And it was either, I think, I don't know, maybe four and a third or four and two thirds. They took me out of the game, came out, you know, got a little mini standing ovation from the people that, you know, knew what was going on. Um, I think I had told my manager maybe, you know, at that time, mm -hmm. you know, that was it, you know, that was it, man, I'm done. And he didn't know before the game. And um, I had played actually in AAA for a couple years with my manager, so we okay. had a pretty good, pretty good rapport. Um, 
and you know just went in the clubhouse took a shower got my car went home and that was the end of it yeah yeah um so as far as like you're saying um yeah a few weeks before that you kind of made that decision um but you know what were some of the emotions that went through your head uh as far as leading up to that decision and, and kind of that that played out you know when, when you were yeah there? i mean you, you know you realize when you start thinking about that you're going to retire you realize that um you know what i was talking about playing t-ball here in the little league field and then all the work that you put in throughout the years and college and then all the you know bus rides and the grind um and then you realize that that's the last time that you're going to put a uniform on in that in that regard mm -hmm. uh, as a player um you know it's definitely emotional because it's what i it's what i had done my whole life right um as long as i could possibly remember um all summer and then it turns into you know almost all year right um, once you get to the professional and college level as well um so it's just kind of you know not not even I don't, I don't even think the you know what am i going to do next even hits until you're done right uh so yeah i mean you know i got in the car on the way home shed a couple tears and you know that was that was it yeah, yeah. Um, so as far as what you did next, though, um, you did not completely walk away from the game. Um, yes, as a player, but you ended up uh, having an opportunity to coach a few years as well. Right. Um, so you were able to kind of see it from the other side. What would you say would be the number one thing that kind of was eye-opening from the other side of it then as well? I think the other side is, uh, you know, you get to see kind of where these guys are coming from. Um, you know, as you know as a player how cutthroat it is, but then you get on the other side and you're you're the one actually you know, doing the cutting. Yeah. Um, I mean, not, not myself per se, um, but I'm in charge of, you know, writing a report every night and, you know, grading these players out. And, you know, I was in the office every, when I was in Staten Island coaching my, anytime we had to release a kid, uh, a pitcher, uh, a kid that I worked with every day, my mm -hmm. manager would bring me in as well. So, you know, sitting in that first, I know how it felt when I got released. Right. I mean, I mean you feel, I mean, your stomach drops and you kind of know it's coming when, you know, obviously I'm not doing real well. <laughs> and the manager, you know, calls me into his office. Yeah. I've never been called into a manager's office before. You know, you're, you're either in trouble or you're getting released. Um, and, uh, you know, the first time you got to sit in there and tell a kid that he's released. You know, it's not the greatest feeling because, you know, like I said, I, I, I know, I mean, it happened to me three or four times. I mean... Hurts less like the fourth time. The first time though is, you know, it's not telling your kid that, telling the, telling the kid that you work with every day that is, you know, his dream's over or, right. um, or at least for the foreseeable future, he's he's done with the Yankees. Yeah. You know, he's going to have to go find somewhere else to play. Oh, man. Um, so yeah, that that's the biggest, you know, difference, I guess. Mm -hmm. Eye-opening experience. Um, everything else is kind of the same. You know, you're there with the players, you know, I know how it was to be a player, so I've you know, there's nothing they can say or do that I haven't done, or I don't. I know what they're thinking. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think that was just being on the other side of the, you know, equation of that is was kind of rough sometimes. Right. Um, so I mean, you you spent the time that you did in in baseball. Uh, you, you dedicated the majority of your life to it, um, and that transition from from player to coach, um, you know, all of these things. What would you say? For the sport of baseball, what would you say would be the number one thing that it's taught you in general? Um, I think probably just, um, you know, it's the grind of baseball is, um, I think, second to none. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just um, being, I guess, passionate about the sport or, and, you know, it translates into kind of what I'm doing now. I work for a staffing company now, but I, I think especially like the competitive side of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just so, I know even when I talk to my buddies now about anything we do, um, we're just like, you know, I want to rip your heart out. I don't care if you're my best friend or not. Um, I think that part of it, um, you know, in, in just life in general, uh, the competitiveness of it, um, I think that translates over just into kind of everyday life, anything that I, anything that I do or anything I'm trying to do, yeah. um, trying to be better than, you know, the next person, right. uh, even like a city, even if it's my best friend or probably even if it's like my nephew. 
<laughs> you know, I, I let him win from time to time, but I, you know, still I'm trying to try to beat him too. Uh, but yeah, I think that's that's pretty much the number one number one thing about you know the playing a playing playing a sport, especially at the you know the highest level or you know professionally anyway. But. Absolutely, I mean, a long season, long days, um, and and being competitive and, and having that passion definitely helps you helps you keep going through it. So yeah. I definitely appreciate that. Oh, absolutely. Um, and then I guess the last thing I'll ask is, you know, as as your identity um, throughout your career, you're a baseball player. What did that transition look like um, from from player? And fortunately enough to have the opportunity to go from player to um, to coach. But what did that identity shift look like for you? Uh, as far as you know, when I was done playing, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't think it was all that hard. Um, I was able to separate baseball and, you know, like, uh, my personal life. It mm -hmm. wasn't always just, you know, I didn't relate to just being a baseball player. I kind of like to be well-rounded, I guess, per se. Mm -hmm. Um, but I guess trying to find what you're going to do after that, the next, the next step, that certainly is the, the hardest thing to do. I had a couple different jobs before I worked for this staffing company, one of which was working at a baseball academy mm -hmm. um, when I left baseball um, and I soon realized that that was taking up as much time um, or more than actually being at the park every day right um, so I, that wasn't what I wanted to do forever I you know spent 50 55 hours at a baseball facility um, and maybe kind of start to not even like baseball as much um, you know just being there and doing that every day and then I worked a sales job after now I mean I do some sales now right. as well but yeah I mean trying to figure that out afterwards is you know it's a I guess it's a tough thing but um, like I said I um, tried not to just be a, a baseball player as it as it was right and uh, it's great that you were able to keep that separate to be able to find out or figure out who you were the whole time that you were we're also a player, so yeah. I appreciate that perspective as well. So, um, thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Um, I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, please like and subscribe. And remember, whatever it is you do today, approach it with the mindset of, is this my final play? Thanks again.